Hi, Kath Quinlan here, and congratulations on the purchase of your FAF Hobby 1142. This video is going to take you through the basics in four simple steps. Let's get started with winding the bobbin, followed on by threading the needle. We'll then learn how to select stitches easily and make any adjustments required, and finally, how to master the one-step buttonhole. Let's begin. To wind a bobbin, I'm going to place the thread on the horizontal spool pin and then use my spool cap just to push it into place. This is going to keep it nice and secure for me. Then once I've done that, bring my thread up and around the tension disc at the top here, so that's for our bobbin tension. I like to thread through the hole in the bobbin itself, bring the thread to the top, put that over the bobbin spindle at the top, push that over to the right. Now before we can start winding our bobbin, we need to pull the flywheel out to your right. Push down your presser foot to control the speed of the bobbin wind. Push your flywheel into the machine again and to remove your bobbin, move the bobbin spindle to the left and up. If you would like to wind your bobbin while your machine is still threaded, you can do that with the extra spool pin that's provided in your pack. So you can place that into the hole that's on the top of the machine, push that into place. I then pop the, th the felt pad onto the top of the spool pin to stop any damage to your machine. Place your thread onto the extra spool pin. Once you've done that, it's simply a matter of following the same process as we did with the horizontal wind. Move your thread around and then put it into the bobbin and go from there. Started with our threading process, we need to ensure that the needle is in the upright position. To do that, you wind the flywheel towards you until you see the needle in its uppermost position, and you will see your take up lever now extends past the top of the machine. So, we've already got our spool of thread on the horizontal spool pin with our small spool cap. We're then going to place the thread in underneath the guide with the arrow down through our front section here which include our tension discs underneath and up and over the top of the take up lever that we just lifted. At this point here it's a good idea to lower your presser foot and what that will do is it will prevent the thread from continually coming off the spool. From this point here we take our thread down and through the top of the needle guide. thread the needle we're going to use the needle threader that's located on the left hand side of our needle bar. Place the thread underneath the hook then in underneath the hooks that go beside the needle. Release your needle threader, release the thread and it will form a loop at the back of your needle. This requires a little bit of practice but it's definitely worthwhile. Insert the bobbin, we need to open the bobbin cover. So to do that, slide the dial to the right, that's this one here, and the bobbin cover will slip out of place. To ensure your bobbin is in the correct position, you need to pull it off and see that the bobbin is winding anti-clockwise. Once you know that's correct, you then place it into the bobbin case. Ensure that you hear a click as the thread is put into the bobbin tension. Once you've done that, we need to bring the bobbin thread to the top. I hold on to my top thread, wind the flywheel towards me until it will pick up the bobbin thread and lift it to the top of the foot. Replace your bobbin cover. Then take your threads up to the side of the machine and pulling from the back through to the front, trim them off. To select a stitch, look at your stitch menu on the machine. From here, the top row of letters indicates which letter we need to select on our stitch selection dial at the front of the machine. At the moment, we're sitting on B, which indicates straight stitch. To select the stitch length, we use the dial on the right hand side of the machine. Turn it left and right to get to where you need to be. In this case, we're going to select a stitch length of 2.5mm. 
width setting on your machine is the very top dial. In this case here, it is on five. That indicates your needle is in the center position. To start sewing, hold your threads at the back of the machine. Pitch down on the presser foot and away you go. To turn a corner, wind the flywheel towards you until the needle is in the down position. Lift the presser foot lever, lower and turn the corner. Use the reverse button, hold down until it sits as far back as you want it to, release and then stop. To go from a straight stitch to a zigzag, we use our stitch selector dial to move to a D. Then we adjust the length of our stitch. I'm going to make this a length of four. Then we need to adjust the width of our stitch. This is the dial that's on the top of the machine. So in this case, I'm going to turn that to a four as well. You can see the zigzag on the right hand side of the foot. That's a four mil by four mil. To create a satin stitch from zigzag, turn your stitch length dial around to less than one. Anywhere between zero and one will give you a lovely a satin stitch. This is something that you can experiment with depending on how close you want your stitches to be. The width adjustment can again be your choice as to how you would like your satin stitch to appear. If you would like your satin stitch closer, move the stitch length dial closer to the zero. Your machine comes with a selection of feet. All of the feet required to do the standard stitches on the machine are included. We're now getting ready to attach the automatic buttonhole foot R. To know which foot to use for which stitch, the stitch menu along the top will tell us that information. So the first row of letters indicates the stitch selector dial. The second row indicates the foot that's required to complete that particular stitch. To create our one step buttonhole we need to adjust some of the settings on the machine. Firstly we need to select buttonhole which you'll see on the stitch menu at the top is A. Turn your stitch selector to A. You'll also note that we require foot R. This is the buttonhole foot. The width of your buttonhole foot is recommended between 4 and 5 and the length of your stitch is down to between 0 and 1 and you'll notice there is a buttonhole picture on the dial itself to help you know where to go. So the, t the closer you move to 0 is the tighter or the denser your stitches will be. So I'm going to leave it a couple of clicks above 0. The next thing we need to do is attach the buttonhole foot. To attach the buttonhole foot, wind the flywheel towards you to ensure that your needle is in the upright position. Push the button on the back of the foot to release and then take off your standard foot. To set the length of your buttonhole, the end of the foot is adjustable. So open it out and place your button in and then close it up. It will do up to an inch wide button. Use the presser foot lifter to push it to its highest position and then lower over the top of your foot and secure in place. To get your top thread through the buttonhole foot, place your fabric in underneath the foot, wind your flywheel towards you one complete revolution. This will bring the top thread through to the bottom and when you pull your fabric out from underneath you'll see that it will bring the top thread through the hole of the button foot. You'll then need to pull the buttonhole lever directly down. That's located just behind the needle bar and to the left. 
So that needs to sit behind the guide of the foot. Once you've done that, you can lower your presser foot and let the machine go through the buttonhole process. It'll start with a bar tack for the beginning, go in reverse to create one side of your buttonhole, create the end bar tack, and then follow back to the beginning again. Once it gets back to the beginning, it will stop in that position and continue to go over itself until you take your foot off the foot control. Reset the buttonhole, flick the dial back to reset and back to A. Then you can repeat the entire process. For more information on your FAF Hobby 1142, refer to your user's guide. It's a great informational guide on different stitches and different techniques that you can do with your machine. Enjoy!